Howdy folks, I'm Brian, and here's some Reddit. We have a pretty short episode for you today, so let's get started. Our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for making my daughter think that a toy burglar will steal some of my daughter's toys if she misbehaves? Ever since my daughter was five, she's eight now, I tell her that a man called the toy burglar will take her toys away and give them to a child who is well behaved if she acts up. I even had my current boyfriend dress up as the toy burglar and speak to her while she was misbehaving. He dressed up in a ski mask with a black and white top and some red pants and a red scarf. After meeting him, she started to believe me even more and now, when I bring up the toy burglar, she will stop misbehaving and say sorry for whatever she did. My mom thinks it's cruel to make up fake characters for my daughter to be scared of and thinks I should stop. but. I think is no different than Santa. Like, if my daughter is well-behaved, I'll have a toy burglar randomly send her a gift. Am I the jerk for doing this? All right, OP. I think that, you know, I know a lot of people believe that telling kids about Santa and whatnot is fun and what, and all kinds of things. But I honestly have a little bit of a problem with santa because i feel like it's and i, I know i'm gonna catch some slack uh, some flack for this probably but i i i think it's gaslighting children <laughs> quite frankly i believed in santa when i was a kid and i believed in the tooth fairy when i was a kid and i was you know really hurt i think when i you know believed in, when i was told that they weren't real and I think getting kids to behave by using these kinds of things are just kind of bad. Instead of a toy burglar, I mean, you can, it's almost like you don't want to take the credit for doing this because you, in essence, are the toy burglar. There is a toy burglar, it's you. You'll take away her toys if she misbehaves. And you're kind of putting off the responsibility of making her dislike you or being unhappy with you by claiming that there's some other more powerful being out there that is able to do these things. And I just think that that kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth. So I agree with you. I think this is a lot like Santa. And I'm, in my personal opinion, I don't necessarily think Santa is the best course of action for getting kids to behave i also think that you know santa the idea of santa is a good one like i think that the spirit of christmas where we you know want to give toys and whatnot is a good thing like telling kids that santa represents the spirit of gift giving or something like that i think is fine likewise i think if you were to tell your daughter that if she misbehaves, then you think that her toys deserve to go to someone more deserving, if that's really what you believe. I don't necessarily think that should be the case, but I think using this stick approach to making your kid behave is um, not my preference, but I mean, everyone gets to choose how they parent their own children. So yeah, I I'm not your child's parent, but I personally disagree with this. You're the jerk. Negative reinforcement is so detrimental and is going to give your kid so much anxiety. My Nana used to tell me that if I misbehaved, she'd tell, sell me to the gypsies. I was so terrified of that, I started having panic attacks because I felt insanely guilty anytime I acted how kids do. Your daughter is going to need therapy. Probably. Oh, and another thing is like, what's going to happen when she's, you know, talks to her friends about the toy burglar? Like, What's that going to do? Um, are they going to be like, what toy burglar? And then she's going to think that she's a special case or any number of things. It just, it really brings up a, I guess, a lot of scenarios that could lead to some very disastrous outcomes. All right. Our next letter is titled, Am I a Jerk for Using My Special Needs Privileges? About a year ago, my university added a psychological program to the special needs students' requests. I have been diagnosed with severe anxiety and clinical depression, so I decided to apply for the program. The program is strictly enforced, and they have requested my diagnosis and the date and a doctor. Then, they contacted my doctor. Well, I got in. I have around 1.5 times more time on exam 
and I'm able to record the lectures. I can get help from the program when I need it, and some absences are allowed, etc. One of my friends learned about my special needs status and then confronted me, told me that since I was stable and functioning, I shouldn't be using the program and I was probably taking a slot away from someone who needed it more. It's true that I have been in therapy for a while and I've been taking medication. My panic attacks are less frequent and less damaging. She called me a jerk for taking part in a program that clearly isn't meant for me. Some of my friends told me that they agree with her and that they had been thinking this for a while. I'm truly conflicted. On one hand, I truly benefited from the program, but on the other hand, maybe they're right, and that I'm using this selfishly. So Reddit, am I the jerk? I'm going to say that no, you're not the jerk here. One of the reasons why you might be doing well right now is because you are using programs like this, and your friends are stigmatizing your health needs, they may not realize that things are harder on you than they are on them. And I don't think there's anything wrong with using resources that are meant to help people like you in the position that you are. I mean, this is a well-screened program. It requires a diagnosis. And so you went through all the proper steps and they deemed that you would benefit from this program. And so they enrolled you in it. If they had thought that you weren't a good fit for it, then they would have said, no, we don't think that you're a good fit for this program. You don't need to uh, have any extra accommodations. So your friends are claiming that they are better equipped and better able to judge your needs than a trained uh, psychological department. And I think that's just nonsense. <laughs> your friends don't know what they're talking about. The thing is that not everyone starts off on a level playing field and some people have it harder than other people and I think that knowing what your weaknesses are and being able to get help with them if you know these things are outside your control is extremely beneficial so yeah no I don't think you're a jerk not the jerk did it ever occur to your friend that the fact that you are stable and functioning and flourishing right now might be a direct result of getting those accommodations. You're not being selfish by taking care of yourself. Don't feel guilty for using privileges that were created to help you out. Also, things like extra time and exams and extra office hours, absolutely not limited resources. You getting these things isn't stealing them from someone else. Yeah. All right. Our last letter is titled, Am I a Jerk for Asking My Friend to Stop the Way She Shows Off Her Before and After Shots When She's Refashioning My Clothes? I'm a plus-size gal who is really into fashion. I usually donate my clothes unless I can resell them. My friend Katie is really into refashioning clothes from thrift stores. She buys plus-size clothes and then alters them into her size with a lot of other changes, like making them into crop tops or mini skirts or other things. It's a really popular, creative thing to do. Well, she asked me if she could have first pick of my clothes because I'm actually larger than what she usually finds, and I'll give her more material to work with. I said, sure and I would let her pick through my stuff that I didn't want. But I asked her to tag me in her posts and point people to my shop where I sell the nicer things. She started showing off her refashioning stuff on Instagram, and I was excited, until I saw the way she did it. In Katie's before shots, she makes these really exaggerated, grossed-out faces where she's draped in the oversized clothes, or... She'll do that face where she blows out her cheeks and holds the clothes out as wide as she can and does a cross-eyed expression. It's really obvious to the viewer that she's trying to mimic a really overweight person like me. When I saw that, my stomach dropped and I couldn't shake the bad feeling it gave me. I tried to give her the benefit of the doubt and I asked her why she's making those expressions in the before shots. And she said she just thought it was funny. I told her that, to be honest, it felt hurtful and that I'm the one who gave her the clothes and it looks like she's just straight up making fun of me and my body, especially since she tags me. She told me that I'm being hypersensitive. I asked her please just to not make those faces. She told me something like, after you gave me the clothes, they aren't yours anymore. So 
You really aren't in a position to tell me what to do. I thought about it for a while, and in the end, I agreed. If I gave her the clothes, then they're hers to do with whatever she wants to. So my solution is that I'm just not going to give her any more of my clothes. I told her that, and she blew up on me, telling me that I'm just looking for a reason to be offended, and if I'm this insecure, then I should be working on bettering myself. Am I the jerk for asking her to stop what she was doing in the first place since I'd given her the clothes? I just wanted to thank everyone for the responses. I didn't expect this to blow up. I want to reiterate that I don't think her refreshing plus size clothes is the issue. A lot of people do it, and it's great to use the items before they end up in the landfill. Plus, for everyone saying she should just go buy fabric like everyone else, good apparel fabric is expensive, so in comparison to what you can find at a thrift shop. All right, OP. I don't think that you're the jerk here. I think that her making these expressions and tagging you in these photos kind of sends that point. Um, I don't think that this is in good taste and you gave her a reasonable request. And she's saying that she's not going to do that reasonable request. And it sounds like you were giving her these clothes for free. She wasn't even buying them off of you. And she refused to, you know, treat them with respect and treat you with respect. So, yeah, no, I mean, if she wanted free clothes, she could have had free clothes. All she had to do was abide by your wishes and <laughs> not make rude faces. Yeah, I think that that's really in poor taste. I don't think that that was something she should have been doing. And I think she should have stopped when she realized that this might be offensive to you. Not the jerk. Katie made a very excellent point that once those clothes were hers, that she could do whatever she likes with them. You took that logic to the next step and decided the clothes wouldn't be hers. Perfectly reasonable, and I'm sorry your friend is a jerk. And not much of a friend at all. Yeah. Not the jerk, you're under no obligation to give her your things, and her unwillingness to accommodate a reasonable request, don't grossly caricature plus-size people as a fun way to advertise your refashioning, is a good reason to end this arrangement. Her reaction to your decision is a good reason to reevaluate your friendship, frankly. Yeah. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, consider giving me a like. If you didn't, consider giving me a dislike. Also, consider saying something in the comments below. Uh, also, if you haven't subscribed to this channel and you feel so inclined, why not subscribe? It'll help me out. I can produce you know videos and you can see them it's a pretty good arrangement and it's all for free all right thanks so much for watching and i'll see you all tomorrow